Hello, my name is Michael Phillip. I'm a physical therapist who's going to be covering the topic of bone growth stimulators today. An estimated 6 million fractures occur every year with approximately 5% or 300,000 becoming non-unions. Non-unions are fractures that are just not healing and develop for a variety of reasons. They can occur due to a large fracture gap, inadequate mobilization, malaligned fracture ends, infection, or inadequate vascular resources. This is where bone growth stimulators come in. Bone growth stimulators are devices that use electrical currents to promote bone growth in fractures that are not healing well. Bone stimulators produce a signal at the fusion site like the one your own body produces to induce normal bone healing to be classified as electromagnetic or ultrasound in one internally or externally. With internal stimulators, the device is usually implanted during the surgical procedure that's used to correct the bone issue at hand. Electrodes are fastened near the bone or bones and connected to a battery pack responsible for the impulses. This type of stimulator is most common with spinal fusion surgeries and is typically removed within 6 to 12 months. This device is quite small and implanted in a soft pocket of the skin and the lower backside right next to your spine. It delivers electrical currents directly to the area in the spine where the bone growth is to occur. Some patients report that they can feel the internal bone growth stimulator under the skin when they touch the area, and some say they don't notice it at all, and it's usually not noticeable if you wear it under your clothes. The devices do not create any painful or electrical sensations. With external stimulators, you're fitted with a device that is worn outside the body. It could be a corset or split-like device that contains the electrodes and battery pack, and freestanding electrodes you manually attach to the affected area. Much like the internal stimulator, electrical impulses or ultrasounds are delivered to promote new bone growth. Depending on the device and the patient's situation, an external bone growth stimulator will be prescribed to be worn for a specific number of hours each day, typically from 2 to 9 hours a day. Sometimes the patient may be allowed to break it up into several 1 or 2 hour sessions each day or vary the times that the device is worn each day to better suit your patient's schedule. Typically, the bone growth stimulator will be worn for a period of 3 to 9 months following surgery. As with internal stimulators, the external device is not painful and the patient cannot feel any electrical shocks or vibrations when wearing. While external electrical stimulation devices are considered very safe, it's still important to note that the electrical magnetic effects of this type of treatment is unknown for pregnant women and some types of pacemakers and defibrillators. So, that is the basics of bone growth stimulators. If you have any further questions, I would suggest you speak with your physician regarding the type you will be using. I hope you found this helpful. Till next time.